and we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land, and also I'd like to welcome my friend Rich to a Friday night. Don't get fooled again, Rich. Yeah, I'm trying not to. Um, and also welcome to the folks listening to us and watching us over on YouTube as well. So, Rich, how's All your right. week going? Um, not too bad. Um, yeah, not too bad. Another week. Um, uh, looking forward to Iron Sharpens Iron uh, tomorrow morning, which is why we're doing a Friday night show again. And uh, might be doing another Friday night show next week. Yeah, plan um, on a Friday night show the next two weeks, in fact. So, or Friday show, not maybe not Friday night, but Friday show. No, probably not. So, but more on that later. So watch for us. We might be doing next week. We might be doing an early Saturday show or a Friday night show. Um, but we'll make sure to get you. We'll be recording sometime next week. Yep. Um, so, Mike, how about you? How was your week? Uh, it's been it's been a pretty busy week. Work's been crazy busy, and then uh, we've completely so you guys can't necessarily see a total change, but there's a quite a bit. Of, we moved the entire studio to a completely different place, uh, and then on top of it, I got new computer parts. So uh, getting that all put together and up and running means that uh, you know. The life has been a little crazy. Uh, I didn't have a computer running until yesterday at about 1 a.m. this morning. Yeah. Now, last week you went up to the Minneapolis area yep. uh, for a meet and greet at a fish store. Yep. It was awesome. So did, did you did you come home with any new fish? We did not. Not yet. Um, we got okay. some good ideas. We're probably going back to that same fish store. Um, mm -hmm. If you are in driving distance to it i recommend checking out twin city guppies uh the people are great the facilities are awesome um i can't wait to go back and buy fish from them we are i am definitely buying fish from them uh they have some fish that i really like and i really want to get so this fish tank will soon have soonish have some more fish in it that we're gonna put in here and they'll live there for a few weeks while we uh, grow them out and then uh, they'll go to the big fish tank which soon enough will be in the background of these videos so don't awesome. freak out rich they're, it's just a little fish it's not the big fish. that's okay as long as they're a little fish we're good I'm yeah. good rich doesn't like fish people I know it's weird but he... it is weird everybody has that one thing they're yeah. afraid of fish is mine I I still but he's okay don't with know what it is. Little fish. And I yeah. have I have a giant 150 gallon tank. You guys can't see it yet, but that 150 gallon tank is going to be behind me. We're going to actually I'm going to change where my where where the camera is so that it's here. And when it's here, it's going to point straight back. You'll catch this little tank, which is my quarantine tank. Uh, and then the tank behind me will be my giant 150 gallon tank that has about right now it has about. 75 fish in it uh and we're pushing towards towards 100 to 150 fish in there it's going to be awesome uh all sorts of fish in there it's going to be great you can't i can't wait for you guys to see it but rich you ready for the show i am mike so we're going to be talking a little bit of the ncaa tournament as we know who the final four teams are both of our teams that we picked gonzaga to win it all are out of it so we'll give you a new, a new pick. To but win it I all still have well. a team in the in the games. From another pool, yes. No, even From in another this pool, pool, I have them in the finals. Oh, you do? Okay, I do. Okay, um, as well as going into the NASCAR corner, let you know what happened at the at the uh, Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix over at Coda, as well as give you our picks for the Toyota owners four hundred over at Richmond. Mike, what else are we going to be talking about? So we are going to have the MLB preseason preview. Uh, last preseason preview of the of the year for baseball because a week from yesterday, baseball starts. So we got some stuff in baseball to talk about. And yet again, the NFL makes news rounds 
Uh, yeah, just even more to talk about with the NFL, and uh, we're not even to the draft yet. All that and more, but first, let's roll the intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich. And we're back. Okay, Rich. So, uh, before we do anything this week, we got to talk about our sports cities, or our sports songs with city names. The final round, we had two, uh, not to the final round. We still have a couple more songs, but these are songs that get buys. But uh, our final, uh, our final um, songs for, uh, for, uh, the actually, we names. we don't really know what direction we're, yeah. we're taking this we're series. We're just randomly of polls. picking music that g- plays in in sports so- stadiums, sports stadiums, and we don't know how long it's going to take. But this week we had Cleveland Rocks. I'm um, shipping up to Boston and Detroit Rock City. Rich, how'd you vote? Um, I went with Cleveland Rocks. I've been to an Indians game. Uh, now now Guardians game and um they played this song after they won set off some fireworks it was really cool um but also I mean the drew it was featured on the drew carey show for many years and i loved watching the drew carey show uh when it was airing and even watch it now on uh the laugh network no it's not laugh it's uh rewind on uh on the one of our antenna channels here in the quad cities yeah i uh i too picked cleveland rocks Again, for the sole reason of uh, the Drew Carey show. So, yeah, that's 100% why I picked it. Not ashamed. Totally love that show. All right. So. Uh, so we, we do have a shout-out we got to give uh, on the poll. A uh, friend of the show, Adam Heath, uh, gave us some uh, gave us the suggestion of Lazy Mary, which gets played at Mets, fan, Mets games. Uh, him being a big Mets fan uh, doesn't surprise me, so... Uh, thank you for that suggestion. We'll add that. We did add. I did add it to the poll, but we'll recycle it and we'll bring it back at a later week. Uh, pair it with two other songs that you'll find out at find out at a later date. Uh, but also suggested uh, "Don't Stop Believing" and "Sweet Caroline," which, which commonly get which commonly get played at Red Sox and Dodgers games. Both of those songs are also in the polls for later dates and and have already been on there yeah i know that that we're just going through a whole bunch of stuff um we will eventually get to a lot of these um but there's just so many to get to and uh yeah i mean if there's a song that you know is played at a stadium let us know uh if we don't already have it on the poll we'll probably put it on there we're gonna ask these for a while when we finally decide to move on to another round we'll do that and that could be six months from now by the time we get to that round. It could be. Um, so, Mike, uh, who won this week? So, with one vote, I'm shipping up to Boston. Did not win. Okay. Zero votes. Lazy Mary did not win. Detroit Rock City got one vote. And with four votes, Cleveland Rocks. All right, so Cleveland Rocks will move on to a second round whenever we decide to do a second round. Uh, this week, we're going to go to the city of Chicago. Yeah. Where we're going we're gonna to bring you, uh, we're going to put Bear Down, played at the Bears games. Uh, Sirius, you might not know, the, but know it by the title, uh, but it's the intro song. It's the name of the song that played when the Bulls were being introduced in the 90s during the Michael Jordan era. And uh, Chelsea Dagger, the song uh, commonly played at the Blackhawks games after a goal is scored. Used to be our theme song, too. Used to be ours, yes. Used to be ours. So, for those that don't. That's the one, Mike. So, we'll I'll probably get that up after we get off of air uh, tonight and have that go live uh, probably around noon tomorrow. Yeah. 
I know which one I'm not voting for. All that and more. Save it for next week, Mike. Yeah. Save it for next week. Speaking All right, Mike. The NCAA tournament, our final four teams, yeah. Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, and Villanova. But before we give you our picks, Mike, how yeah. how'd the poll, how did our tourney pick them go as – I'm pretty sure we got a winner, Mike, we do. without the final four games being factored in. We do have a winner. Uh, you, I did not pull it up, so give me a second. Um, I mean, I know that I know who the winner is. I just I want to give everybody else a chance to for me to give them shout outs because, um, you know, we start you start at the back and you work your way up. Why is it not pulling it up? Oh, that's right. Sorry, folks. I got to do this whole sign-in thing. Um, um, I've I've got it up here on the phone. I got the app here. I think I have the app. Let me. Well-oiled machine, folks. Well-oiled yeah. machine. Um, All right. Last place, sixth place, was uh, Amy, who got forty points. She is done. Uh, in fifth place was Pastor David Hyvinga. Who picked Michigan to win it all? He got 45 points. He's done. Um, tied for third uh, was me, uh, who picked Gonzaga to win it all. I got 47 points, which tied me with Mark, who picked the University of Houston to win at 50, 47 points. At 50 points, Alicia Allen. And then at first, and still has a team that could get him points. Yours truly, Michael Hart. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so uh, Mike, you picked Gonzaga. I did. Alicia picked Baylor. And I actually still have. Uh, if if Villanova wins, I win. I get more points and stretch my thirteen point lead out to a twenty nine point lead. Yep. So nicely done, Mike. Um, tip of the cap to you. Um, Yes. All right, Mike. So, final four teams. Who's your pick to win? I got to go with the one team that I have still in it. Uh, I got to go with Nova. I, I need them to win at least uh, one more game. Because if they win one mm -hmm. more game, I earn a $20 gift certificate from work plus a trophy. So, Ooh. Is it a $20 gift certificate to use at work? Or no, like, it, like a, a, a place? Amazon, twenty dollar gift card at Amazon. Oh, nice. So, um, I kind of want to see. And then, uh, so think. Kansas, uh, so I want Nova to win. And you know, Rich, I, I, I do have a soft spot for the team that you have decided to pick. If you would like, yeah, to do that. I'm gonna go with Duke. Yep. Um, I, I think I'm more of a North Carolina fan, but um, it'd be neat to see uh, Coach K. Uh, go out a winner on top, and the sports conspiracy theorist in me thinks that it all it, it's it's going to be rigged. They want to see Mike Shusevsky go out on top. The refs will find a way to get Duke a victory. Yep, I, I you know I don't I personally I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a conspiracy theorist in most any way, and especially when it comes to sports. Um, I think especially now with gambling being such a thing that it's you're you can't you can't rig games anymore no no I, it, it, the, the theory the theory yeah. maybe not a conspiracy theory but you know just that yep no i understand it for, I just... for a good storyline for a good storyline it'd be neat to see yep. duke's got the storyline to go all the way to for them to go all the way media wise it would be a perfect uh, storybook ending for the Shusevsky era yeah. uh, over at Duke and it makes for some good stories um, within the sports medium, within totally. sports media to see uh, Coach K go. Totally get it. Coach totally K agree. and the Dukies go all the way. Yeah, totally agree. Think it, think it'd be fun to see. Um, I mean, but then there's that always that part of you that's like, but the Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, and, and you got to cheer as a Michael Jordan fan. I got to cheer for North Carolina. Exactly. Yeah, and that's why it's so tough. And he still wears those special I mean, shorts every time he plays any game ever. 
don't, don't you remember from Space Jam? His, I do. His special I, I do. shorts. Anyway. So yeah, uh, those games. Uh, the the Nova or the the Duke, North Carolina game is six o'clock tomorrow, and then eight o'clock I believe is Kansas Nova. Yeah, hard to believe, Mike. Duke and North Carolina have never faced each other in the NCAA wow. tournament wow. ever. That's <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's I I did not know that. I did not know that. <laughs> all right mike so that's the ncaa tournament congratulations and thank you for all that played in our tourney pick them um look forward to hope, hoping to have more people next year uh for next year's tournament hey it's uh, so growing mike, last year we only had like four people do it yeah yeah we did so next year we'll get more okay rich do you see what's coming up next uh is it a left turn mike it is a left turn and after that that's another left turn. Yep, because we're heading into the NASCAR corner, presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, on Fifth Avenue. Check them out in their retail store or online on their eBay store. Once again, that's Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Rich, last week we were at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. We had right turns, we had left turns, we had beaten, we had banging, we had... Especially on that final lap. So, uh, I don't remember what we were doing Sunday. We did a bunch of, we had a bunch of, we did stuff with church people and then um, got home and relaxed and then finally got to uh, watching the the last we legitimately came in on the last two laps of the race so fill me in rich the rest of the race how did it how did it go oh uh, the race was pretty good yeah not too many that I mean I, I don't they, they really didn't like have he was too doing many good yeah not too many not too many big names failed to finish so I thought it was a pretty clean race okay. and even the last lap that that last lap for the win, I don't think it was like a dirty move by between Bowman, Bowman, Almondinger, and Chastain. They were all trying to go for the win, and I mean, unfortunately, Almondinger was the Almondinger was the odd man out. AJ Almondinger pushed Ross Chastain out of the way in a co- corner, and Ross Chastain said, "Fine, I'll push you in this next corner." Not next. It was a couple corners after mm-hmm. that. Pushed him out of the way. Now, unfortunately, the l- biggest loser in that exchange was Alex Bowman, who got caught in that, uh, causing him not to get first. A.J. Allmendinger coming in 33rd. Yeah. Second week in a row I've had a driver in the top three yeah. Going into the final lap, he goes for the win and it doesn't pay off. Yep. But that's racing. That it, it, that's it really racing is. and even even Almendinger said it himself, you know, but if he doesn't find it, if I don't remember the direct quote, but I think it was something along as you know, if if he didn't see I don't if he doesn't have a problem with it, I don't have a, if he doesn't see a problem with it, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. So I it was it was good racing, it was a good time. Uh glad to see everybody w- come out of it in with their with their heads on their shoulders yeah so mike you won as chase elliott came in fourth yep uh so he was still in line to get a top 10 finish but he benefited from uh almondinger's uh crash as that affected the rest of the field and allowed elliott i think to move up he was what seventh or eighth at that point he was going and... into that going into the final straightaway and then he moved up to fourth yeah and uh, but your winner, Ross Chastain, getting his yeah. first career win and the first win for Trackhouse Racing, and the first well. uh, first watermelon smash. Yeah, and he also got it on the owner's birthday, Justin um, Justin Means. Did you like the Means. watermelon smash? I did. It was cool. I yeah. was glad to see that they that they brought that into nascar hopefully they'll see could see a couple more uh, watermelon smashes yeah i thought this they, year i thought it was fine uh i thought it was it was a fun celebration i didn't understand it until they until afterwards when i looked up why and it was it's a tradition he's been doing for years so 
good on him. He's a water. He, his family is uh, our watermelon farmers. Yep. Yep. So, Rich, this week we are heading into to Richmond, Virginia for the Toyota Owners mm-hmm. 400. Um, short track racing in a it's because it's what three quarter mile i I believe um so yeah it is a yeah it's three quarter mile d so it, it looks like a tri oval but it is a um it's only a quarter mile so it's a it's a real quick track something fun to watch um there are two guys that uh, I don't like picking for a win that uh, legitimately do really well at this track. They are brothers, and that's the Bush brothers. Yeah, Kyle does tend to do really well in this, but unfortunately, whenever I pick Kyle Bush, he tends to have a really rough day. He does. So that's why I'm not picking him, but so bike. You have the honor since you won for the fourth week in a row. You're up four to two right now. Who's your pick to win? Uh, I am going to pick Martin Truex Jr. That is an excellent pick. That's who I think is going to win the race and who I would have picked if I had the honors. Um, Since I don't, since I can't pick Truex Jr., I'm going to pick another guy that has a pretty good history here at Richmond looking at the driver's stats, and I'm going to go with Joey Lugano. I like that pick, Rich. Uh, Joey grew up on short tracks, so look for him to have a have a good time, uh, and and he'll do great. I think he'll he'll be up there, but uh, Martin looks like he's going to be hot this weekend. So watch out for that. Yeah, he's one. He does. He does. He is also really good at Richmond. Yeah. Um, and, but hey, much much like with Coda, when you got Elliot and had and I had the pivot to another driver. That's what happens when yep. you, in our little game that we play uh, for the show, if whoever driver finishes higher gets the first pick. So that's that's why. And look for that to go, look for that at 2.30 Central Time on Fox uh, on Sunday. So Yeah, uh, Chad Knaus will be in the booth for the next Ooh. two races. Yeah, and you'll have a crew chief uh, with yeah. Boyer and Mike Joy for the next two weeks. Other than America's crew chief. Yes. Larry Reynolds. Yeah. Larry Mack Reynolds. Okay. So, all right, Mike. So that was the NASCAR Corner presented, as always, by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, over on Fifth Avenue. And also, you can check them out on eBay, Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. So, Mike, let's keep making left turns, and let's talk about the MLB. Yep. Um, be- before we give our playoff predictions, uh, we did have two bit of, two, two kind of news and notes to come out this week out of the MLB. Uh, the first is that Albert Pujols is going to go home to ca- go home to St. Louis, and he's going to kind of have one last ride as he's already announced this is going to be it. He's going to play 22 with the Cardinals, and then no matter what happens, he's going to retire. That's I you know I like that, um, and and I think that that's I mean, we all kind of talked that that would be what they did. I always thought it would be a one day contract. I'm surprised they gave him a full year. I think honestly, that goes to speak to the fact that the Cardinals think this year is a wash. I don't think so. No? I mean. The, the... I can I I agree with the whole situation that it probably would have been a one day contract when it came time that he was going to announce his retirement. But with the DH in play, now there's a position for Pujols to be a platoon player. Yeah, that's... because there's no way that they're going to give. They're probably. I think the only way they would put him out in the field is when Paul Goldschmidt needs a day off from the field, which isn't very often because he was, he's a pretty durable guy. Um, but I mean, Pujols will be a platoon player. They said the article I read say that he'll more than likely be a good um, situational pinch hitter, but also I think a DH against lefties, I think it is. You know, so he's not going to be a full-time everyday player, nope. but he's going to get a good amount of at-bats. 
and that's good. That's a good spot for him, and you know I can totally see that. Um, also, apparently this weekend, the announcers or the umpires will be announcing the review, the replay reviews. Long overdue, Mike. Long I totally agree. Overdue. Um, and is it is this just a, a short term thing, or is this going to be like the whole year? This. All year. This will be the first Good. year. So, I mean, I don't know how in depth they'll get. If it'll, but I mean, you've gone. We've it's a little about easier it. watching the game. If you're watching the game in person and it goes under replay, all you see is something either they, either the umpire will like get into a position after he comes out from under the booth or watching it, and it'll be like an out or a safe. Or like he's pointing to a base and going safer out. Yeah. So at least now, if you're if you're watching the game in person, you're gonna know you're gonna have a more clear understanding of what's going on. We've been talking that this has been needing since they put review in the game. I mean, when you and I go to games, how many times do we say it's under review, but and everybody's guessing, oh, they're reviewing whether he was out at second, or they're reviewing whether this, they're reviewing whether he held the test. It's like nobody knows in the stands. And exactly. in all honesty, I, mean, I don't you, think you the should, TV... if anything, before he goes underneath the hood, they're, they're, I'm hoping it's an announcement of this is what we are reviewing. Yeah. And, That's it. And in all honesty, I don't think the TV crews actually know what's being reviewed. I think the TV yeah, crews are not just every guessing. Time. So, you know, I'm glad that this is by far and away the best thing to happen to baseball for by way of uh, the the officials. You generally don't want to hear from the officials because that means that they're putting more into the game than they need to. But this is something that has been needed for years. I am extremely happy to see this happen. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked. Let's do it. Yeah, supposedly Sunday's Angels Dodgers game will be the first time, the first game that they will be in making announcements. Uh, but supposedly they've been rehearsing making the announcements uh, this spring, but just not during games. Okay. So that'll be fun to watch. As um, that'll make ba- as... it'll make it a lot easier to watch. Both yeah. in person and on TV, because knowing knowing what's happening is important. That way, there's not you can't you don't have that level of secrecy or that level of conspiracy theory that just is able to come up just because nobody knows. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Rich, it's time to get down and dirty. We got to talk what our predictions are for the playoffs. Now, this week, uh, we are going to give you who we think is going to win each division and who's going to win the wild card positions making the playoffs this year. Rich, yep. Now, the you... wild card predictions are just who is going to make the playoffs as a wild card, not necessarily who is going to be in wild card positions one, two, and three. Right. For And, and, and again, I put them in order of one, two, and three, who I think is going to be first, second, and third on both. Uh, But in order for our prediction board, it is considered correct if they made a wild card. Yes. So, um, So, Rich, let's start with probably the easiest division to pick. The American League Central. It's got to be the White Sox. Who else? Who else has a team this year? I mean, on paper, the Twins. But when I was think the it's going to be you... a lot more. It'll be a lot more competitive this year. But I still think it's the White Sox division to lose. I I totally agree. I I think they're going to be ten games above every other team in that division, at least. And I think the second place team will get to that in a, in a second. All right, Mike. Probably the second easiest, in my opinion, I think, the division in the American League to pick, the American League West. So this is for me the hardest to pick, not because I did. It's not. 
I don't know. I, I didn't know immediately who I was picking. Just my conscience doesn't want me to let me doesn't want to let me pick that team. All right. So we'll let that team be unnamed because we know nah, you, you can, do not like this team. The Asterix? You call you call them the Asterix. They are the Astros. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, once again, maybe, maybe the Angels do well if they're if people stay healthy, if Trout and Rendon yep. stay healthy, and Otani can repeat his um, his performance from last year. And the Mariners, I think, are a good team, but I mean, the A's just sold everybody off. Yeah, and you know that they're probably they'll sell off the players that they didn't trade away at the trade deadline. So that team's only going to get worse. Yep. And I don't know. I mean, but I, I much like your argument for a for the team in the East, I think I can't pick against the Astros until someone dethrones them. I think they're yep. that good. Speaking they're, of they're the good. American League East, uh, the Rays they didn't do much in the off season to improve themselves, but they were they were by far and away the best team in that division this last year. Um, and I have no reason to believe they're not going to be the best team in the division this year. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that assessment. I, I think I think the Rays are going to make the playoffs, but I'm going to give the division to the Blue Jays. I really like the moves that they made this year, bringing in Matt Chapman to improve an already good offense anchored by uh, Bo Bichette and uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. So, and they're going to have a full year of uh, Jose Barrios, who they acquired at the trade deadline last year from the Twins. And you know what? I think the Blue Jays are a great team. I think they are going to be the number one wild card. Uh, I think they are that good. Um, All right. But, I gave my I think, number one. I, I gave my number one wild card to the Rays. Okay. And that's totally acceptable. Um, I was going to say I everything you said, how much they've improved that team and the the – the concept that they have, I mean, the team they're starting with, oh man, in the field, their bats, you're right. That is a hard team to pick against, but the, the and race... one thing to keep in mind is because Canada has that yep. really strict COVID policy. If anybody's not vaccinated, they can't make the road road trip up to Canada and play. Yeah, that's totally that's so that's you very could accurate. see teams be shorthanded because they because of a player can't travel. So that's three games that they're without a particular player. I'm wondering is the league going to give you an extra guy? If you... I would, I think you can. You would be because that person goes on the restricted list or right. the inactive list. So I'm. I would imagine you would be able to call up a guy from the minors yeah. to take his roster spot if he can't play for three games, a two two to four games when you go up to Toronto. Yep. Total that's what I was thinking. So yeah, let's All right, Mike. All right, Mike. So who did you put as your other two wild cards? Because this is where we're disagreeing. So uh this one I'll go with the one that I think is a little bit less controversial. Okay. The team in the north. The twins, they have, like like we said before, on paper they have a great team. They and and they did last year. They have a very similar skills wise team as they did last year. Last year they failed to to prove to us that they could do it. Um, but I think they'll be able to at least they should be able to at least eke out the ability to make a wild card. All right. I, I thought about the Twins. I, I The Twins were like one of those two teams yep. that just missed my cut for making the playoffs. I gave uh, one of my wild cards to the Seattle Mariners, a team that kind of surprised team surprised everybody last year. They they picked up the Cy Young Award winner in the American League, Robbie Ray. Yeah. And they really didn't lose too many bats. And they added Jesse Winker and uh, Euanio Suarez. Euanio. A Uanio. That's right. Okay. Now um, we get so, into my controversial so pick. Or do you so want to give yours? That's why I went with the Mariners. Yep. Do you want to give yours? Um, I'm going to go with the Yankees. I, I, they're, 
they're a team that makes the playoffs every year, and I they're also a team that if they're close to or if they think they're a couple pieces away, they'll make moves at the trade deadline to help the team. Um, the Yankees. So one of the things with the Yankees, they a lot of people talk about how some a lot of times they develop players, but one of the keys to developing a team is that you got to be able to pay them when it's time to pay them. And mm-hmm. they have the checkbook that's going to pay them. So I 100% agree. I think you're you're 100% accurate there. Uh, d- d- if they are a piece or two away at the trade deadline, they're going to make the playoffs. Why? Because they will, they will roll out that checkbook. They will trade whatever they have to that makes them a better team. But uh, I think this is where I get a little cray-cray. I always got to pick one team that out of left field. And I'm going to mm-hmm. pick the Rangers. All right. I, I like the moves that they made, getting uh, Simeon and Seeger, um, paying a big, a ton of money to get those guys. Yep. Um, but I just don't think it's enough. I, I think that I think, they're going to have a heart. I think the money I they spent says they're willing to make big, big bold moves. All right. And if you continue to make big, bold moves like that, you're going to continue to make to be able to at some point make that happen. You're just going to. That's it. All right. You're going to be able to make that happen. If you are willing to make those big, bold moves, you will be you will be at some point like again, it's the same. It's the same thing as the Yankees. They're proving right now that they are willing to put in that money. They are willing to spend the money. They're willing to make those big moves. So at trade at the trade deadline, if they're close, what says they're not going to do it again? They might. They might. I, I, you know, it, it's not as far out of left field uh, as, I, as I thought it was when I originally saw you copying and paste when I originally saw you writing in the Rangers yep. on our Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet. Um, I think that, that I, we where we keep our predictions at. I, I Yes, it is a slight left field, but I think that it's one of those that the way that their offseason has been, they've shown that they're willing to spend some money. And with that extra money that they're willing to spend, that's where that that's why I think that's going to be a team that makes makes more moves. And looks for the bold moves to continue to get better. Um, yeah, let's head um, to the National League. All right, Rich, the easy, the easiest team in all of baseball to pick out of any division. Period. You know who it is. The L.A. Dodgers. L.A. Dodgers. Like, I mean. I think we both have the Dodgers in. I, I again, this is just me guessing. Um, I, I kind of see it, but I think we're both probably going to have the Dodgers in the World Series. It just makes sense. They're that good of a team. You'll find out next week for sure. But uh, but yeah, they, they. Did you see they just hired? They just acquired Craig Krimbrell this week, today. I know who's winning the world. I, I will, I'm about <laughs> tempted to drive down to Emmitsburg, go to the casino, and slap a hundred spot on who's going to win the World Series this year. I am that close to doing it. But anything could happen in baseball, Mike. Anything. Did you see the that's Giants true. going over a hundred, a hundred <laughs> wins last year? And yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. And then and the Dodgers losing, losing in the playoffs last year. Uh, to the Atlanta Braves, yeah. who I picked to win the East. Yep. Um, th- Anything and, could happen. Yeah. Um, I picked the Phillies to win the East. All right. I, I like the Phillies. They made some good moves, getting Castellanos and Schwarber. And also some, um, I don't know who their closer is going to be, but if at least they have a lot of guys in that bullpen that have experience closing. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, and if you, so if you have a quality bullpen, you could go far. You could yeah. pretty good. Good. I I put the I gave the I gave one of my wild card spots the fighting Phils though. Okay. Um. So. Man, I guess that leaves 
do we want the central? Yeah, we got to do the central. This one's tough for me. I think I don't think we're going to get two teams out of the central into the playoffs. I think we will, but only because I'm not confident. I don't know if I have a confident enough pick for the, for a third wild card team. Oh, I feel because pretty good there's about no there's no way that I, I just don't think that I, I guess for me. Yep. So so in the central, I went with the Brewers. Yep. Because I I, I yep. think they're they're the better team in the in the central. They got a good bullpen. They got good starting pitching. And if you got good if you got good pitching, you can go far. Yeah. Yeah. You can go far. And if Christian Yelich can rebound and come back to being cheater. Maybe, That was Ryan Braun. He's no longer with the team. Oh yeah. How, yeah that that's was right. Ryan Braun. No, they were. I forgot. They were chanting it. He was the MVP the year that I was there. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. So if he can, if he can put up half of the production that he yeah. beat, half of the production that he put up in his MVP year, the I think the Brewers could do really well. I, and um, I think you're right. So, but the other team that I gave a wild card to was the Cardinals. Maybe as one of those as I because I don't know who else to give a wild card to. How about San the, Diego or San Francisco? You Maybe just, you just said it, San Diego, man. Who do they got to play? A lot of games against the Dodgers. Yeah, they do have a lot of games versus the Dodgers, but I still think, and you're right, the the Cardinals have an easier road to make the playoffs because they play. The Reds, they play the Pirates, the Pirates, the Cubs, and they play the Cubs. But I don't think the I, I think outside of the division, the Cardinals aren't that they don't. <sighs> Every single year, it seems like we find ourselves saying that. I mean, are the Cardinals that good, or could they make the playoffs? And by golly, every September rolls around, and who's in a position yeah, to make the playoffs? It's the true. St. Louis Cardinals. You are right, but I I don't know. I don't know that there's two. I don't know that the Central has a strong enough. I one thing I will guarantee. Ooh, this is this is my hot take of the week, Rich. You ready for it? All right, go ahead. There will not be. Two N uh, N L Central teams in the second round of the playoffs. Second round of the playoffs, yeah, I'll give you that. They they will not make it out of wild card the the wild card games. Period. I I don't know that either one will make it out. Let alone, I, I guarantee it won't be both. So. Yeah, both probably will not. I will. I can agree with you on that. Okay, Rich. But but for me, the teams that I couldn't, that the the teams that I thought could have made the playoffs instead of the Cardinals, were probably the Giants and the Padres, the two teams I didn't not put in the playoffs. Yeah. The, the San Diego because I just got burned last year by picking them. Everybody did. And exactly, and I thought the Giants came out of nowhere to make to win a whole, over a hundred games last yeah. year, but. They lost some great. They lost some good players. Chris Bryant, uh, Buster Posey's no longer with the team, and they lost uh, Kevin Groffman to Toronto. So I, I don't think they did enough. Rich, there is still one team that you haven't said is in your playoffs. Yeah. So Mike, you put the Padres. You gave a I wild did. card to the Pods. I did give the. I. They're st- they still. I mean, yes, they lost. Didn't they lose Fernando Tatis? Yeah, he yeah. broke his wrist in spring training so or sprained it, bro- then, broke it. So he's going to be out till June. It's going to hurt him, but I think from June through, they'll be fine. They still have, they still have great talent there. So I'm not worried that side of it. Um, I also think this. I think the Braves are going to make the uh, the wild card as well. Uh, and then, so you said the Cardinals. You've already said the Phillies. Your third team, and we both agree. The Mets. Yep, I agree. I think the Mets are going to be the third place team, though. Um, 
just because I think they'll be the strongest team. Uh, but I think they're going to be of the three wild card. I think they'll be the strongest, but I think, uh, that NL East with the playing the Braves as often as they're going to have to. And, and some of that, uh, I think they're going to get beat up a little bit, uh, over there in the, in the NL East. Uh, and then the, or uh, the, yeah, the Braves and the Phillies are going to beat up on them quite a bit. That's just my opinion on that. Uh, and then, yeah. yes, the Padres are, have the Giants, but who else in the or the 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 they have the the Dodgers, but then they have the Giants and the Rockies. The, the Rockies, you're worried about the Giant, the Rockies. So no. I think the Padres are going to be in in second. I think the the Braves are going to be the the number one wild card. Uh, that's how I have it stacked. Rich, you don't you don't necessarily stack yours that way. I do. Um, I, I think I, I can, I can go with the wild. I can go with the stack. I went with the, I gave the Mets the first wild card. I put the Cardinals in number two. Okay. They always find a way to win. And, uh, I went with the Phillies in number three spot in the three hole. Yeah. And, and, and I think you're, you're right. Whoever the third team out of the, out of the East is just going to be one, gonna, they're going to limp their way in because they're getting beat up so much by the, uh, by the other two teams. Um, so I, All right. So next, yeah. So next week, uh, we'll give you our picks for who of those playoff teams, which one is going to make the NLCS, and the NL and ALCS. We'll give you a, win, a matchup and the winner. Yep. And then in two weeks, we're going to give you our World Series winner. Yep. For winning it all. So uh, NFL yet again pushes uh, the NBA, which is getting ready for the playoffs. And uh, NHL also getting ready for the playoffs off the first page of the sp- of sports in most of the U.S. And they even push the USFL coming in two weeks as well. Um, yeah, they did. They it, People love the NFL. I don't know if they purposely put these types of news stories, obviously not the first topic we'll talk about but things about um the rooney rule and the ot changes if they purposely plan out map out their off season to keep them in the news cycle and uh, as in they topics do. of the media and so they can stay relevant during the off season um so uh the rooney rule has been evi- has been revised i see what you're typing there mike uh, so the Rooney rule has been revised. The language has now included that a female can now is now added as a member can be considered a minority or an ethnic yep. um, interview hire to meet the requirements of the Rooney rule. They're not requiring it yet, but if they if they interview a female candidate, that can count towards their requirement of the Rooney rule to inter of interviewing two external minority candidates. Also in that revision. So there's two things that, that were, mm-hmm. that, that we got to talk about with that revision on top of it. One ties in to another story that we're covering. Uh, we'll go there in a second, but the other one is um, you now have to have one of your offensive coordinators. No, no, just an offensive coach. Oh, one of your offensive a coach, a coach within sure. the offensive side of the ball. Right, has to be a minority or female. Now, no, I'm not going to go there. I was going to go somewhere else. Political, okay. politically minded, uh, somewhere else. Uh, but I, I've chosen not to. I'm going to be. I'm going to rise above that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, the other thing that leads into uh, the retirement and hiring in Tampa Bay head coach. Mm -hmm. And the thing, so Bruce Arians retires to go to the front office in Tampa Bay and they hire uh, Todd Bowles as their head coach. Now, part of the revision of the Rooney rule is that there is a loophole. If the opening 
is after March 31st? Or March, March 1st, actually. It's March 1st. Oh, March 1st. If the because... opening starts after March 1st, you do not have to interview anyone external, period. That's going to get closed. And that's going to, I guarantee that gets closed by the end of this year. All right. The biggest name in yeah. the, the biggest sports franchise in the NFL wants to fire a head coach and be able to just directly hire and not even talk about the Rooney rule. And it's probably going to happen in the next year or two unless the NFL does something to make that that loophole uh, not a loophole. Yeah, I, I didn't even know about that. But, I mean, it, it's a fair point. Because it's never and happened. I bet you, and I bet you if the Buccaneers hadn't gone with a minority candidate, I bet you there you would have seen the the media would have been would have been talking about all that would have been talking about the fact of well why didn't you hire the two guys that yeah. Brandon Lefwich or Todd Bowles so you got on staff yeah already in the building th- that are minority candidates one of them deserved the job over whoever they decided to hire like if they had chosen like their special teams coordinator yeah who I don't even I don't know if yeah. He, what well, yeah but it, it doesn't yeah. matter if they would have hired or, anybody other than one of those two guys by the way both of those guys deserve to be a head coach Mm-hmm. Uh, Todd Bowles had to coach the worst team in the NFL. Like, tell me, and he got him to the playoffs Rich, once. Rich, the New York Giants call you tomorrow and say, "Hey, we need a head coach. You're going to be our guy. Do you really want to take that job?" Um, I'll take a million dollar job, even if I'm going to lose half, my, leave, lose three quarters of my games, and be out of a job in two years. And be hated by everybody that lives within a three hundred miles of where you where you work. Yeah, I'll take it. The pay I is mean, too good. Sure, but I mean, if you really if you really are a head coach, and that's the job you're getting offered, or you get a job offer of an offensive coordinator for, we'll go for a mediocre team. You get the you get the Atlanta Falcons offensive coordinator job offered to you, or you get the head coach job for the Jets. Which are you taking? I'm going to take the head coaching job. Really? Because at least because at least I have on my resume, I was an NFL head coach. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm not tainting myself with that team. Because if I'm a good offensive coordinator, I can work my way and earn my way to be a head coach. When you're the head coach of the Jets, you have to have on your resume you were a head coach of the Jets. <laughs> your record is going to be a losing record nine times out of ten. I don't want that on my resume. I would take the offensive coordinator position almost anywhere else. Almost. There are some teams I wouldn't. Mostly, mostly residing in Wisconsin. Okay. So I remember hearing about the time around when Brady actually retired, there was some sort of a rift coming out that supposedly there would be times <coughs> where him and uh, Leftwich, the offensive coordinator, would go through and start the planning meetings, like the yep. game planning and game planning and scripting out the first couple of series without Bruce Arians yep. in the meeting with them and they'd have everything done or pretty much done or have a rough draft. Arians would come into the room, rip it up, make them start all over again from scratch. Yeah. So do you think that there's any, so do you think Brady coming back played any role in Arians deciding to go up to the front office or was this, or do you feel it really is genuine of I've accomplished everything that I want to do and I wanted to give bowls the bull uh Todd Bowles the job in a good position to succeed which I'm gonna is the say, story that he told at his press conference I'm going to say n- none of the above okay I'm going to lay out some stuff again I have no insider knowledge none 
No, no, we neither of us do. I don't have it. I don't have sources. But what I do have is some knowledge of some history. How many times has Bruce Arians had cancer that we know of? I think it's I think three, right? Maybe getting. I think you're getting your coaches confused, but go ahead. I'm pretty sure Keep he going. has. Also, 72-year-old Bruce Arians. I think he's like 60, 69 or 70 years old. So he's getting up there in age. But, I mean, to his credit, I mean, would, so you're right, 69 he's won a year old. 69-year-old yeah. Bruce Arians tore his Achilles last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's a cancer survivor, though. I think he might be getting him mixed up with Chuck Pagano, who he... No, who Arians, no. He did. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. That's where yeah. it was. He took over for Pagano with the Colts. No. Uh, on an interim basis. Bruce Arians has fought three forms of cancer. All right. 2007 article, Sports Casting. Uh, dot com. Nicely about, done, Mike. I stand corrected. Talks though. about that he's 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 faced cancer three times, three different types of cancer. Um, so, I mean, I I think with his he, resume, go ahead, Mike. I I'm saying, do I think? Do I think? Uh, do I think? TB12 coming back pushed it that direction yes i think that pushed it in that direction but i think i i 100 percent think that there is something health wise with bruce arians that he doesn't want to share to the public just yet hmm. he wants to get he i'm i'm guessing he had he's cancer's come back i'm guessing he's had some form of cancer come back he wants to get all of the information about what's going on with it before he makes his announcement because there are cancers again i don't remember exactly which forms of cancer he had but there are some forms of cancer that are much more um aggressive and there are some that are fairly treatable skin cancer skin cancer is very treatable it is still cancer there are it is not a joke but it is something that thousands of people deal with on a regular basis and it's it's normally can be treated very quickly so he needs to figure out and this is pure speculation but i'm guessing he's got he got some he's got some elevated white count white cell counts which is, his doctors are saying well with your history and with this we probably think there's something going on let's start running some tests let's figure it out he's going to go through run all of these tests down and they're going to figure out what the cancer is before the diagnosis comes out in public and that's why he's mm. leaving but i think if it wasn't for the fact that tom brady said i want a coach that i can work with i want to go back to having fun like it was the first year i was here I think the that that push would not have been made as much, and then I think the other side is that I genuinely think there's some some illness that he hasn't talked about yet. All right. So once again, pure speculation or pure speculation. We yes. have no knowledge that that's what actually is going on. Um, but I'm using history because again, yeah. he has not been at someone who has been who comes out right away when he's had it. He he lets it he figures out what's going on first then let's let's you know or comes out later and says yeah i had cancer we we we've been through treatments we're on we're in remission we're done like he's he's had press conferences where he's like yeah i had it i did treatments we're in remission already this just so you know so yeah i mean overall mike with his body of work as a coach being yes he is a hall i i think he yeah, I think he is a Hall of Famer. Um, would it have affected him more? I would another Super Bowl ring be another good thing to have on to have on his resume? Yes, but I think it would have almost looked a little bit with Brady coming back. 
it could have with this. It's still a Super Bowl or bust. I think any time yep. right with the with Brady's age, yep. any team that Brady's on, it's a Super Bowl or bust. Yep. To where I think it might have affected him a little bit more negatively if he didn't win the Super Bowl. Yeah. To where, if anything, I don't. There's a part of me that almost thinks that Bowles is in a is in a no lose situation. Yeah. Right now, I mean, he can't. I mean, if he wins the Super Bowl, it's hey. We didn't need Bruce Arians continuation continuation. Yep. I can still do this job. It's great. If they don't win the Super Bowl, he can easily fall back and say, you know what? I didn't, I, I was carrying off Arians vision, not my vision. So yep. I want to, I need to bring in, I want to bring in these coaches and these coaches and strengthening conditioning yep. coaches and everything. And if it's in fact, Brady's last season with the bucks again, and he retires again, he gets a chance to build that team in his vision and show what he wants to, where he wants to take the, take the Buccaneers next. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so also uh, what came out this week, the NFL's overtime rules have been modified. Gearing, and this is just for the playoffs. Both teams will get possession of the ball in overtime. Uh, after the if they both score, then it becomes sudden death. You okay with that? I'm okay with it, but I see where other people are coming out. I mean, I think the coin flip is determining too much in overtime, but at the same time, if your team if in the playoffs, especially if you're there if you just because you lose the coin flip doesn't mean you're going to automatically lose the game because you should also have a defense that's good enough. If you're in the playoffs and you've gotten the game into overtime, that probably means that your defense should be good enough to at least hold the opposing team to a field goal. Yeah, you would think. Um... But at the same time, I, I really... For the playoffs, I think both teams should get a possession. And then by all means, whether it's they both teams kick a field goal or both teams score touchdowns, then go into sudden death. I think that's the right thing to do for the playoffs. Yep, totally agree. Okay, uh, and then finally, we know who is going to be on hard knocks. Uh, it's the Detroit Lions. What do you think? They're, by the way, there were only three teams available for hard knocks according to their hard knocks rules. Hmm. Okay. The Lions, the Panthers, and oh, I forget the third team. Um, but what do you think of the of it being the Lions? I like the Lions. I mean, they're they've got a colorful head coach that uh, provides some interesting um press conferences and dan campbell of the interdirectory news conference we're going to bust some kneecaps and um so they're, they're definitely going to get their uh get some good sound bites out of uh out of dan out of uh dan campbell and if anything it gives detroit a chance to uh highlight highlight the detroit team because really really the only chance you really hear about the detroit lions is thanksgiving yep thanksgiving in the draft that's it that's really the only time they probably get national exposure. Yeah, so the only three teams that were eligible, the Detroit Lions, the Carolina Panthers, and a team we've already talked about, the New York Jets. Hmm. Which one of those do you want to see, Rich? Um, I think I'd still have to hit with Detroit. Yeah, I agree. Let's go, Detroit. Let's go with the De- Detroit Lions. Okay, folks, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We are going to talk about The Masked Singer. If you don't want to hear about The Masked Singer, you can leave. If you don't want to hear spoilers on The Masked Singer, you can leave. If you want to join us for talk on The Masked Singer, now is your time to listen. We will spoil this week's episode. And go. Rich, what did you think of the new group? I don't think it was as good as the previous group. I think there were some highlights and I think there were two low lights or should I say four low lights. Mm. And okay. 
of those, I don't think the right person went home this week. All right. So um, the person that went home um, was the was the lemur, yeah. who was uh, Christine Brinkley. Christy Brinkley. Um, I don't think that's the right person to go home. I think uh, I think the three amigos should have gone home. Or mm. uh, what was that other crappy singer? Oh, I can't remember the armadillo. Yeah, the armadillo. The armadillo. I don't. For me, didn't have the the strongest performance it, it, it either. For me, um, I I almost want to see the Hydra stay just a little bit longer, but I don't think they've got enough to win the group. It's uh, for me. I'm not seeing like a clear cut. That's the class. Of, that's the class of the group, and he's um, probably going to win. The teddy bear did a good job. Yeah, I don't think I think. It's between the teddy bear and the ringmaster. Yeah, I don't think anybody else has a has a chance. Yeah. And I think the way that the show I... works, it's gonna be the teddy bear because they already have someone from Good, so it's gonna be someone from Cuddly. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, I think with the way they've set the show up, Good, Bad, and the Ugly, you know, the finals is gonna be Good, Bad, Ugly. Yep. So. And, and the two people from bad this time don't have a chance. So it's going to be, somebody. I, th- I think it's going to be the teddy They're bear. saving somebody. So anyway, that's our show this week, folks. Um, Rich, people are, are watching us on Facebook. They want to listen to us in the car. What should they do? Uh, look us up anywhere where you find all of your other podcasts. If you're a podcast type of person, uh, we can be found on any platform on all the major platforms, uh, just search balls and sticks the podcast. Mike, if they're listening to us on uh, in podcast land, they want to interact with us or watch us uh, or just watch us. Where are the two places that you can find us? So we ask you if you want to check us out on YouTube.com. Check us out there. Look us up for look up balls and sticks uh, and uh, like, comment and subscribe there. If you're listening to us in podcast land, we do ask that you give us a rating. Give us a five star rating if you think we deserve it. While you're giving us that five star rating, review us. Let us know what you think. And then uh, if you want to interact with us, check us out on Facebook.com slash balls and sticks. Folks, it's been a great week. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. And uh, God bless. Rich. What should I do now? Uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and roll the outro? Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa. This is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich.